So why should we protect our fisheries? Because they are the gateway into the natural world. I don't want to see us go back to a system where we leave 100 years of degradation for somebody else to clean up. So my name is Gary Whalen. I am the president-elect of the American Fishery Society. I am retired from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Fisheries Division, where I spent about 40 years working on fisheries across the United States, but mostly in Michigan. I've worked on a broad range of issues in my career. So we're really good at talking to fish, and fish don't talk back, but it's much harder to build relationships, and biologists forget that to be successful, you need to build big networks. And so my vision is a build a stronger community, offer opportunities to bring retirees back into the society. We can't afford to lose the knowledge we're losing today. We can't rebuild it. I also want to build a stronger policy entity. You know, one of the parts of our mission is conserve aquatic resources. And to do so, you need to be effective and be part of the political system in some way. It makes many people very nervous. It doesn't bother me much because I've spent most of my career working in policy. Finally, I, I want to ensure that we have good outreach and continue ensuring that our tent is large and, and make sure that we welcome all who wish to be fisheries professionals to become a part of American Fishery Society, recognize there's a home here. But also I want to have some emphasis on our Canadian members. You know, right now there's a lot of stress and strain on our relationships across the border. We are an international society. I think that we have become more efficient because of increases in technology. We have the ability to measure things we never dreamt of. We know more about fish today than we've ever known. I think that the inclusion of new disciplines or newer disciplines like genetics have altered the way we do business. The ability to understand who a fish is and, and what they are and potentially what the stressors are in an individual fish were unheard of when I started my career. And of course, I think the other thing I have seen is a diversification of our, of our field with people. It's wonderful that we now have a, have a field that's far more diverse. We have way more different types of people, different backgrounds, different genders. It, it's, it's gratifying to see. They bring things to the table that we would have never have brought to otherwise. What we're seeing today is an unprecedented change in our climate. Certainly we're in a resist mode right now where we're gonna probably have to go to an adapt mode at some point. But at some point, they're gonna run out of places to run to. And we're gonna to have to think about different ways to adapt to climate change. I can't imagine what a young professional today is gonna experience 40 years from today. And I don't see it abating, unfortunately. I think that the current society and their values and thoughts is that they don't wanna change, they don't wanna adapt necessarily. There's a large group and component in, in many communities that are uninterested in that and are frankly not even willing to accept the evidence that's, that's been provided them. So I think that it's up to us as professionals and professional fishery scientists to at least provide the correct information out there, ensure that people realize and really look at sort of the obvious changes to the environment and, and highlight them and document them. I think that that's where we can make a difference. I have pretty significant concerns though with, with the current attitude and the current movement to deregulate things. If we move that way, I'm less optimistic. <laughs>